fire series. Um, I entitled this one, um, A Church on Fire is a Praying Church. How many of you have a best friend? You spend time talking to them? Yeah. Get together for coffee? Maybe share a meal? Facebook, walk, walk with them? Yeah, all sorts of things. Well, that's what it's about, walking with them. And God wants to be your best friend. And God is wanting to have a conversation with you. Um, Rick Warren, who started Saddleback Church and Celebrate Recovery and all that, wrote a book called Purpose Driven Life. And I don't agree with everything that Rick wrote in here, but one of the first chapters is about time. Where you put your time is where your heart is. And I know it's hard when you're working and raising a family to find time for God sometimes, or maybe you're finding time in the midst of it. Oh God, please help me with these kids. You're driving me crazy. Amen. Right, 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 please, right to the whole of it. Um, you know, or as you're driving down the road, believe me, driving around the village as you go, please God, don't let me have an accident. Please God, don't let somebody hit me. Please God, get that person home. They don't know what they're doing. We've got, we've got all these things going on. We, we talk to God, and it's okay. Those are prayers. Those are prayers. Our life should be full of prayers. Every breath we take should be a prayer. Amen. And so today we've got the scripture where the disciples come to Jesus and say, teach us to pray. And he gives them a formula. And unfortunately we've taken the formula and turned it into a ritual. So that sometimes we say it too fast. Our Father, you are in our and Have you ever caught one of our pastors doing that? <laughs> But uh, we try to slow it down. But it's um, trying to see where he's going. Everybody's up. <laughs> I'm wandering husband. Please God. <laughs> okay. Are we okay? Oh, you can't hear me. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. okay. All right, I'll speak up when it comes to my mind. Don't worry. <laughs> he worries too much about me. So we have conversations with God, and we ask him for the basics. We praise him, honor him, our Father. We ask for food. We ask for be forgiven. And we ask not to be led into temptation. And we can elaborate on that. Jesus, I don't think, meant for this to be A, B, C, D, get done. All right, let us be in a moment of prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. Yes? Don't interrupt me, I'm praying. But you called me. <laughs> called you? I didn't call you, I'm, I'm praying. Our Father, who art in heaven. There, you did it again. <laughs> Wait a minute, did what? Art, called me. You said, our Father, who art in heaven? Well, here I am. What's on your mind? Uh, but, but, um, I didn't mean anything by it. I was, uh, you know, just saying my prayers for the day. Uh, I always say the Lord's Prayer. You know, it makes you feel good. It's like getting a duty done. All right, go on. Hallowed be thy name. Hold it. What do you mean by that? By, by what? Why, how will be thy name? Well, it means, it means, oh, good grief, I don't know what it means. How should I know? It's just part of the prayer. By the way, what does it mean? It means honored, holy, wonderful. Okay, that makes sense. I never thought what hollow meant before. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really mean that? Well, sure, why not? <laughs> what are you doing about it? Do we? Well, nothing, I guess. I just think it would be kind of neat if you had control of everything down here like you do up there. Have I got control of you? Well, I go to church. That isn't what I asked you. What about that habit of lying you had? And your temper? You really got a problem there, you know. And that is the way you spend your money. All by yourself. Hey, 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 stop kicking on me. I'm just as good as some of the 
rest of these people here at church. <laughs> Excuse me? I thought you were praying for my will to be done. If that is to happen, it will have to start with the ones who are praying for it. Like you, for example. <laughs> oh, all right. I guess I do have some problems, some hurts, habits, hang-ups. Now that you mention it, I could probably name some others. So could I. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought about it much till now, but I really would like to cut out some of those things. I would like to, you know, be really free. Good. Now we are getting somewhere. We'll work together. I, you and I, we'll work together so victories can truly be won. I'm proud of you. Um, look, Lord, I need to finish up here. This is taking a lot longer than it usually does. <laughs> Give us this day our daily bread. You need to cut out some of that bread. <laughs> Somehow, show him the right way. 
Maybe you can even help me to help him. There now. Wonderful. How do you feel? Well, not bad. Not bad at all. Actually, I feel pretty great. You know, I think I'll be able to go to bed tonight for the first time since I can remember and sleep. Maybe I won't be so tired from now on because I wasn't getting enough rest. You're not true with your prayer. Go on. Oh, all right. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Good. Good. I'll do that. Just don't put yourself in a place where you can be tempted. Wait a minute. What do you mean by that? Change some of your friendships. Some of your so-called friends are beginning to get to you. Don't be fooled. They advertise that they're having fun, but for you it could be rude. Either you're going to have to stop being with them or start being a positive influence on their lives. Don't you use me as an escape hatch. I don't understand. Sure you do. You've done it a lot of times. You get caught in a bad situation. You get into trouble by not listening to me. And then once you do, you come running to me saying, Lord, help me out of this mess. And I promise you I'll never do it again. You remember some of those bargains you tried to make with me, don't you? Yes, I do. And I'm ashamed, Lord. I really am. Which bargain are you remembering? Well, when I was going a little over the speed limit and I passed the cop, I remember telling you, oh God, don't let me get pulled over. Please, God, don't, and I'll, I'll never speed again, and I promise to be in church on every Sunday. <laughs> you got pulled over and got a warning to slow down, but you didn't keep either of your promises, did you? I'm sorry, Lord. I really am. Up until now, I thought if I just prayed the Lord's Prayer every day, then I could do what I like. I didn't expect anything like this to happen. Go ahead and finish your prayer. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Do you know what would bring me glory? What would make me really happy? No, but I'd like to know. I want to please you. I want to know what a difference it can make in my life. I can see what I've messed up made in my life on my own. I can see now it would be great to really be one of your followers. You just answered my question. I did? Yes. The thing that would bring me glory is to have people like you truly love me. And I see that happening between us now. Now that these old sins are exposed and out of the way, well, there's no telling what we can do together. Uh, Lord, let's see what we can do to make of me and my life, okay? Yes, let's see. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That, that wasn't art if you didn't know. That was uh, Dave Portia. The first time I, I met Dave and I heard that wonderful voice, I said, I've got my God. <laughs>
missing every day, but that gives you the concept. And I know not everybody had a good father, and not everybody had a good mother, and some people may not have had a good family, period. But you still can have that relationship with your father, God, because he's your daddy. And he wants to hear from you daily. No matter how mundane or boring you think your life may be, God is there to listen. And I'll tell you, with our, we prayed from the time I saw him laying on the ground there, and he was praying. His first prayer was, no broken bones. Well, they forgot to ask God about no soft tissue yet. <laughs> I laid hands on him, we prayed, we asked for help, and it was, it, it's in God's time, as he said, it was that day in the doctor's office, he was able to lift his arm. And we've all been praying. And God answers prayers. Yes. Yes. yes no. And I've got something completely different in mind. There was, not to interrupt me, but <laughs> sure. He always does. There, there was a second prayer. That second prayer was <clears throat> that I wouldn't that that injury mm -hmm. wouldn't be wasted. And it was wasted because I had an opportunity to give God the credit to the young doctor that decided I didn't need the surgery. So my both my prayers for history, God got the glory for the thank you. Amen. Okay, that's the end of my sermon. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Yes. yes. I think you get to hear from me again in October. Now the problem is with a retired preacher is you even have very little to say or you come in with volumes to say. So uh, pack a lunch next time you're <laughs> Okay, where do we go to next?